امروز در بازی فوتبال چکا مطاری کار خوب برده آه امروز کس بخاطر که مابید کس در ممانی رایه دیگه موتر فاملی رو مبره امو این در موتر کار دیگه در فوتبال موری در کجا هستا؟ بازی کس در کسبارو هستا چکا موری؟ خب این بازی امروز فاینال هست ما در چند روز نبودم دیگه امروز بازی فاینال هست دیگه هم هره دیگه هم از خانما هم از مردان خب دیگه دیگه پرسان دیگه ندرم خب خب دوستای عزیز یعنی یاسمین جان هم کسی گزارش تهیه کرد اول سلام خدمت شما دوستای عزیز امیدوار هستم اینجور سهدمند باشین دیگه امروز کس فاینل هست دیگه ما یاسمین جان و امید جان موریم در بازی فوتبال هست دیگه باشت بوریم دیگه اوام خیلی گرم هست چی را خمیشه فکر کنم که فاینل خانوما چار بجه شروع میشه از بچه ها ساده شش نیم بجه دیگه باش تو که ما از یاسمین جان کدام سوال دارم خب یاسمین جان اینا لی تو بگی کجا ماری؟ فوتبال سینی خب فوتبال سینی خب یک سلام در دوستای عزیز سلام دوستای عزیز خب 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 چون چون جورا سیحت مندی ام خوبی ام چون تو جورا سیحت مندی با خوبی ام خوبی خواه خواه امی جان تو ایک سلام منی در دوستای عزیز خواه دوستای عزیز خواه ام روز در کجا ماری امی جان ام بگه فوتبال ماری سایل نی آه فاینال چسته خواه تشکر امی جان خب دوستای عزیز دیگه میگه ما کوشش مونیم که امو هایلایت هایشی بخشش مو خلاصه امو دیگه اهدای جام رو کوشش مونیم که بخشش مو ویدیو بگیریم دیگه انشالله را دیگه موفق و پیروز باشین دیگه امو رو بیننده باشین دیگه تشکر دوستای عزیز عزیز دیگه پیش از ایک بودی فوتبال رو سهل کنی دیگه امده نان مخوی از اوستو کسی میدونه خوشت. اوه اسامین تو تورنمنت والیبال چطور نرفته؟ افتاده که تو گفته که دیگه سال مونده که همین افتاده. آه باز تورنمنت شما دکو جای دم میبرن یا دکو بریسبین دار والیبال؟ دکو بریسبین. آه 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 آه
and I love to play the game because uh, I was told because I was a girl that I wasn't allowed to play, so I like to prove the haters wrong. So um, I'd like to introduce you to James, another goalkeeper from Melbourne City. Hello, uh, I'm James. I'm one of the goalkeepers in the men's team. Um, I haven't played in my country that many times or gone to <laughs> any World Cups, but I've done a little bit with some of the youth national teams and yeah, I've been involved a lot in the academy sides at Melbourne City and was a part of the team that got promoted last year. And yeah, and now we've got a big player, we've got Florin. So Florin's going to introduce himself. Hey guys, uh, my name is Florin Brandi. Uh, I'm from France, as you can hear. Uh, my English is not great yet. Uh, yeah, it's been four years now I'm in Australia. Before this, I've just played over there in France and yeah, enjoying my time in Australia. And that's it. Thank you so much. Please give a round of applause. So I'll kick off the questions. Any of the parents, uh, the kids, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy. Come ask the questions, and then if you ask a good question, you'll get an award from Kay. Um, what would be uh, your advice to the younger kids that's here uh, for making it to pro, and to their parents in terms of supporting them? What would be uh, your advice from you guys? Thank you. Um, I, I think it's important that you foster their love for the game. Um, we all play football because we love it, right? And we train as hard as we can because we're having fun. So it's really important that to make it professional, uh, you know, that's a long time away. So what you've got to do is every day you've got to do your best. And every time you turn up to training, you've just got to be that little, better, little bit better than you were last time you trained. So if you're not feeling the best and you're still trying to give 100% and you're doing your best every time, then that's what matters and so that one day when somebody's watching you they might pick you for a team and you don't even know they might be watching you and you don't know who's in the crowd you don't, don't know where they come from or who they might see and, and they need a goalkeeper they need a defender they need a striker and because you're giving a hundred percent every time you give your best of yourself every time you show up so that's in, really important uh, as a coach, that's what I'm looking for, always giving a 100% effort. Yeah, I'd say something similar, just work hard and you never know when the next opportunity is, so you always got to be ready to take it. So, yeah, work hard and listen to your coaches and your parents and always say thank you. Yes. No, thanks. Uh, I think it's really important you know, having a good communication between the parents and the kids and making sure you know, they keep uh, active and get motivated. And uh, respect. Uh, anyone has any questions from the crowd? Yes? Yeah. Who was your idol when you were a kid? Who was your idol when you were a kid? Ask Melissa first. I was a little bit different. I had Michael Jordan uh, as as my favourite sports idol, um, and now my idol is Buffon. Um, I'd probably say Manuel Neuer. Yeah. Um, I've got two when I was kids. So the friend, the first one was Zidane as a French player, and I like Ronaldinho when I was young. I think it was, it was really good to have an idol. Uh, I think that was a really good question. I think you deserve an award. So come down. Uh, give him a round of applause. It's always good to have an idol and someone to look up to. Anyone else has a question? A lot of raise their hands. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Uh, what was your toughest game you've played? You ever played anything or anything memorable? Um, when we were trying to qualify for the Olympics, 
um, I had to travel to North Korea and play in Pyongyang. Um, and a lot of people say that, you know, it's one of the parts of the world that not many people get to see. Um, and there was 90,000 people in the crowd all cheering against us. Um, and it was very, very intimidating. Um, especially as a goalkeeper, you can get, uh, you know, lots of chance against you. And, you know, even they were laughing at some of the things that we tried to do. And, you know, they really tried to mock us. So it's really hard to go to um, a lot of countries all over the world because they are so against you. And um, it's really intimidating. But that was probably one of the hardest. And then in Australia, the hardest place to go to is Sydney FC. <laughs> Anytime we play there, it's always difficult. <laughs> Um, I'd say the hardest game I've played was for the under-20 national team against Chile. Um, yeah, that was just levels of players I hadn't played against before and everybody in the team was good. So, yeah, that's probably my hardest game. Um, I don't have the national cup like those two guys, so I would say on the pitch it was against PSG uh, five years ago before I came in Australia. And we we tried to make a plan like pressing them high on the pitch and everything, but they they were just uh, too good. So even if you press them, they find a way to get out of the press and so fast. Every player are good. So yeah, that was the toughest game, and I think we we lost five one or six no, six one from there. This yeah. Well, thanks. That's a great answer. Dude. I played my toughest game just before. I played for over 35 <laughs> with Fahim and some of the boys here. Yeah, so yeah, that was my toughest game. Anyone else? Maybe any of the parents that wants to ask a question? Okay, you, you, I'll give it to you and then I'll give it to the parents. Question. Uh, how did you get into Melbourne City? How did you like, get into... Like, like the scouting games. Oh, maybe something about Korea. How did you get into Melbourne City? That was his exact question, you know. Um, for me, it was almost uh, an opportunity that came because uh, their goalkeeper got injured um, and they needed a goalkeeper. So um, I was available at the time and I was coming back from a knee injury. Um, and Patrick Kisnorbo, the former men's coach, um, he was the coach at the time and he gave me an opportunity and then I haven't left since. So um, sometimes your opportunity comes from somebody else's injury um, and I had experience and that's what they needed. Uh, but I'm sure James has a different pathway to me. Um, yeah, so I joined Melbourne City in the academy when I was 15. And before then, I'd just been playing NPL um, for GV Suns. And I'd gone to a few national championships um, with Big Country. And then one day, I got an email asking me if I wanted to come train for a little bit. I trained for a couple of weeks, and then they said, do you want to join the academy? And it's just gone on from there. Uh, for me, it was just, I received a call one day. I was the uh, end of the season, out of contract in France. And someone called me asking me if I could be interested about moving to Australia. And so we just have a thing with my wife and the kids and, and after we took this opportunity and and now yeah it's been four years and a half and four years that we there in Australia. Uh, thank you, you know. Um, it's, the pathway is always there, uh, great opportunities, Australia is the land of opportunities, there's always some opportunities out there. I think it's always good to have some sort of mentor, you know, the parents and young ones. Uh, Kay here, got a question. Uh, let's ask Kay and then I'll come back to you guys. Kay. It's alright, I won't get the prize, but I'll ask a question. Um, obviously, City being a, a located in the southeast and obviously a very community-based club, uh, what role do you see the club play in the community, uh, especially in different cultural um, and diverse backgrounds? Great question, Kay. 
Um, I think uh, football brings the world together um, and it's the one, you know, fluent language that we all have in common. Um, so when we have a ball at our feet or in our hands as we're goalkeepers, um, you know, we can speak the same language and sometimes that's all we need to share a moment, uh, to really facilitate um, people's belonging. Um, coming from different countries all over the world, sometimes it's not easy coming this far. And the circumstances or the reasons why you come here uh, can be sad, um, you know, and very tough. So the hard times can be forgotten for that time that you play on the pitch and it's really important that uh, the reason why we came to South East is because we wanted to be a part of this community. And we knew that you were all out here wanting to play the game that we all love. Um, and then we wanted to give you a platform to do it and helping you know, the guys run a tournament like this is really important um, that we show you that we are here to support you and you know that we never know when we'll find the next superstar in tournaments like this it can it can really open our eyes to a lot of different players and it's just another way that we can um, support the southeast corridor um, and we go further further all the way down into Gippsland and, and all those places so the closer we are to those areas we've got more more kids out there that we can we can keep an eye on um, and give a good opportunity to It's always good to uh, give back to the community and I'm sure there's a big community in the South, especially the Afghans that uh, loves Melbourne City. Uh, we've uh, we asked two more questions. The guys that asked questions before, come down and uh, grab a shirt. The guys that asked the question before, did you get your award before? Did you get the shirt? I think you asked, so maybe come get your award. I think we've only got time for two questions. What's your question? Have you scored from your career? Which one was your favourite one? Uh, a bit of fun. How many goals have you blocked? Yeah, how, what's your favourite goal? How many goals you've scored in your career and which one was your favourite? A bit of a memory check. <laughs> I've only scored one. <laughs> 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 oh, actually, no, I've scored one. Huh? Uh, to be honest, I'm not the one that scored the most goal. I probably scored around 40 in my career. That's not a, that's not a lot. Um, and probably the best one, uh, one from halfway of the pitch. The keeper was uh, outside of his box and I just took the, the shot and he went in. So, yeah, good memory. I actually, I was a field player for a lot of my career before becoming a goalkeeper when I was 20. So I did score a few goals. Um, and my favourite was when we were uh, playing against New South Wales. Um, and I was playing on the uh, left full back and I overlapped and scored at the back post. That was, that was my favourite one. Scoring against New South Wales is always good. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Um, one more question is from Fahim, the coach of Hampton Park. This is for Melissa. Because you've got the experience of being a player, professional, through the national team, and now you're coaching, the difference of your understanding of the game as a player and now as a coach, how do you, how do you, portray that to the players you're coaching to make them understand the game better. How do you portray your experience as a player to the younger player? Um, I yell a lot. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of times coaches see things and it's very difficult for them to explain it in a way that you know, so we use video and we use uh, other degrees, um, you know, a lot of field play. But when we're in the moment, being a goalkeeper is actually a really good position to help your teammates to understand where they should be in time and space. 
Uh, and you know, the more information I can give them, the better that they can achieve their goals. Um, but in terms of when I started my coaching career, it was while I was still in the national team, and I found it really, really helpful um, to learn more about the game. So even though people out here might be still playing, I highly recommend you go and do your coaching badges um, so that you learn more about the game and, and learn how to get the best out of each other and, and how to play and all the systems. And the more you know, the better you know, footballer you can be. Thank you. Give a round of applause, please. Come on. One last question. Before I ask the questions, can you come get a Global City scarf? Oh, come on, Fahim. <laughs> you ask the questions, you're a city supporter. One last question, Zade. I saw your hands for a while, so what's your question? What do you think of match officials? I think, you know, if they're not there, uh, the game will kick, kick off. off. Anyone else? Uh, one more quick question before we sign off. So, when after these questions, I want all the kids to give your staff, your poster, whatever you have. Please come down here, line up for sign off and signatures, okay? Yes. When you were younger, did your parents doubt you? When you were younger, did your parents ever doubt you? Oh. <laughs> um, half and half. So my mum, she wanted to help me. Um, she found me a football team. Um, and my dad, he has strong views. He's from Italy. Um, and he always thought that uh, women shouldn't be playing football, so I kind of had half and half. Um, but then he saw how good I was, and then he supported me a lot and came to my first World Cup when I played. So um, I won him over in the end. Um, I'd say both my parents supported me a lot. They always drove me down to Melbourne, which is a two hour drive from where I was living. So that was massive when I was growing up. But I suppose mum always, I don't know if she doubted me, but she always wanted me to have a backup plan. So she made sure I did well and finished school and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, quite the same and then James, uh, both my parents support me. Uh, we didn't make, when I was really young, a big deal about soccer. It was just about enjoying the game. And, and you'll be happy to go training every day and do your best, um, as I said before. And after it happened, what happened, and if you give your best, you, you will have a chance one day, and you have to take take this chance. Uh, I was going to agree. No, uh, I think that's it about the question. Uh, a lot of great questions. Well, if you have scarf shirts, please line up here uh, for the sign-offs. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> You bring them in? Well,
that's why I stopped playing. They're all very quiet. <laughs> Huh? What's that? 